say, can you see by the dawn's early light what surprisingly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. that our flag was still there. Oh, saved us that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land Please join me in the invocation. On behalf of all here and all the faiths and beliefs present, we remember all those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001. And we honor the heroism of all those that rushed to come to the aid of the innocent victims of those heinous attacks. Our hearts and souls go out to those who lost their lives for their fellow citizens that fateful day. And we ask for the protection of all the first responders who risk their lives for us every day and for the soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen, and coast guardsmen who protect us around the clock and around the world. Amen. Born in 1982 to Thomas and Peggy Winstead, John Thomas J.T. Winstead II was raised in the Sandy Cross area of Nash County. J.T., as he is called by, called by many, was raised with the devotion to his community and, community and respect of everyone he encountered. While working for Dale Bond, Farms Incorporated at 16, Chief Winstead made the ultimate career choice to join the law enforcement community. After he graduated from Southern Nash High School, he attended the Basic Law Enforcement Training, BLET, night program at Nash Community College. He began his 16 years of service to the Nash County Sheriff's Office in 2003, working his way up the ranks from Deputy, Corporal, Corporal and then Sergeant. His dedication to justice along with strong work that ethic Allowed him to allowed him the opportunity to work alongside several local, state, and federal agencies as Deputy United States Marshal during the Operation Falcon. Chief Winstead joined the Nash Nashville Police Department Department in 2019 as a captain, his highest position to date at the time. Chief Winstead was instrumental in rebranding and modernizing the department. As captain, he oversaw day-to-day -day operations with his first task being the modernizing of all equipment and uniforms, along with hiring additional personnel. Early into his captainship, he was also responsible for rebranding the department's image, starting with the department's badge. As captain, he directly supervised the investigations and narcotic, narcotics division, implemented the LESO program, and fostered a relationship with the Department of Homeland Security to bring a federal task force officer to the department. Under his leadership, Nashville officers have also been assigned to the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force Command by the United States or by the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation. Beyond the advancement of the department, Chief Winstead has regularly sought opportunities in his professional development. He currently holds a general instructor he currently holds a general instructor certificate from NC Criminal Justice Training and Standards Commission. He is also certified to teach officers in the following areas, areas rapid development, firearms, simulation, BLET, and in-service training throughout Nash Community College. 
In 2021, after several months of advanced level academics, Chief Winstead graduated from the Administrative Officers Management Program at North Carolina State University. Chief Winstead also holds two advanced law enforcement certifications, one through Nash or North Carolina Sheriff's Education and Training Standards Commission, and the other through North Carolina Criminal Justice Education and Training Standards Commission. On August 1st, 2022, following the retirement of Chief Anthony Puckett, Chief Winstead was appointed to the position of Chief for the Nashville Police Department. As, ch as Chief, JT seeks to strengthen community, strength to strengthen community partnerships and foster more relationships with law enforcement agencies across the state. He also hopes to continuously foster an environment for officers and personnel to strive for more knowledge and professional advancement through training through trainings, task force, and community partnerships. Chief Winstead accepted his promotion as chief with the support of his loving family, including his wife of 11 years, Jennifer, and his 10-year-old ten, twin sons, Wyatt and Nathan. He has also given 22 years of service to the Cooper's Volunteer Fire Department and currently serves as the department's president. Please join me in welcoming Nashville Police Chief J.T. Winstead II. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Honeycutt, Miss Deans, and Director Mayhus for giving me the uh, honor of speaking today at this memorial. It means a lot. So 9-11 was a significant event for everybody in, this, in the country, in the world, and everywhere. So like any significant event in someone's life, you always remember where you're at. Whether it's you've been, it was your first kiss, first car you got, you remember. So when 9-11 happened, I was walking into the D building to go to psychology class with Dr. West. And we walked into the room, looked to the top left, and there was a TV on the wall, and that was when the second plane hit the tower. So while we were here at school, none of us knew exactly what to do or how to feel or anything. So they pretty much canceled all the classes, and we sat in all the common areas and talked about what was going on that day. So as a volunteer fireman, and I was young then, we all went back to our respected departments and we started packing up gear and our fire chief was like oh you need to wait a minute we were all taking off to new york we didn't know what we were going to do but we knew we were going to new york to help our brothers and sisters so then new york sent out information of what they needed from us well at that point in time uh communications was completely wiped out we had no way to talk to then when we got there, we didn't have to correct uh, SCBAs or any other gear. So that put a halt on us volunteering to help. So what we did locally was all the departments in Nash County got together and we started raising money to send our brothers and sisters up north. So we were washing cars, washing fire trucks. People were dropping money off at fire departments and we would send them all to New York to help their families or whatever they needed up there. So. It was a tragic event for everybody, but it brought our country and our nation together. Whether it was the military, you felt the need to go into law enforcement or fire. So we were all here to do a better good for humanity. So therefore, that leads me to my one of my speeches that I kind of like. If you've never seen a movie called Secondhand Lines, it's a good movie. I would recommend you watch it. So Robert DeVille in there makes a speech to his uh, nephew. He says, sometimes the things that you may or may not think are true are is what you need to believe in the most. People are basically good. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Honeycutt, Miss Deans, and Director Mayhus for giving me the uh, honor of speaking today at this memorial. It means a lot. So 9-11 was a significant event for everybody in, this, in the country, in the world, and everywhere. So like any significant event in someone's life, you always remember where you're at, whether it's you've been, it was your first kiss, first car you got, you remember. So when 9-11 happened, I was walking into D building to go to psychology class with Dr. West. And we walked into the room, looked to the top left, and there was a TV on the wall, and that was when the second plane hit the tower. So while we were here at school, none of us knew exactly what to do or how to feel or anything. So they pretty much canceled all the classes, and we sat in all the common areas and talked about what was going on that day. So as a volunteer fireman, and I was young then, we all went back to our 
respected departments and we started packing up gear. And our fire chief was like, oh, you need to wait a minute. We were all taking off to New York. We didn't know what we were gonna do, but we knew we were going to New York to help our brothers and sisters. So then New York sent out information of what they needed from us. Well, at that point in time, uh, communications was completely wiped out. We had no way to talk to them when we got there. We didn't have to correct uh, SCBAs or any other gear. So that put a halt on us volunteering to help. So what we did locally was all the departments in Nash County got together and we started raising money to send our brothers and sisters up north. So we were washing cars, washing fire trucks. People would drop money off at fire departments and we would send them all to New York to help their families or whatever they needed up there. So it was a tragic event for everybody, but it brought our country and our nation together. Whether it was the military, you felt the need to go into law enforcement or fire. So we were all here to do a better good for humanity. So therefore, that leads me to my one of my speeches that I kind of like. If you've never seen a movie called Secondhand Lines, it's a good movie. I would recommend you watch it. So Robert DeVille in there makes a speech to his uh, nephew. He says, sometimes the things that you may or may not think are true are is what you need to believe in the most. People are basically good, that honor, courage, and virtue mean everything, that power and money and money and power mean nothing, that God, that good always trumpets over evil, and it eventually did. It just took us 20-some years to get there. And no matter what, um, true love never dies. And you have to believe that no matter what you believe in, whether it's your career, your family, it never dies. And once you believe in it and you love something, you have to fight for it no matter what. Our freedom was one of them things. Whether or not you believe it or not, or they're true, you have to believe in it because that's what's worth getting up every day and coming to work and doing what you love and trying to help somebody in our line of work. So, in closing, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Albert Einstein. Albert says, try not to become a man of success, but rather a man of value. As you know, 20 years ago, it wasn't the man on Wall Street or the CEO of a Fortune 500 company that was the greatest value to us. It was our brothers and sisters at Ground Zero that ran into the dust, the fire, and the darkness, not knowing what they were going to encounter to do what they chose to do to help other folks. So, again, remember what Albert said, and be a man of value, not of success. Thank you. My name is Phoebe Prezioso. I serve as the secretary for the Student Government Association here at Nash Community College. We would like to thank Chief J.T. Winstead for coming here today to reflect on one of the most tragic days in our history and to as well also honor the lives that we lost that day. We ask that you remember the courage of our policemen, women, firefighters, and emergency medicine services who rush into burning towers to bring thousands of lives to safety. The only way we will triumph over terrorism and to conquer the senseless tragedy of that horrible day is by celebrating the kindness of our human spirit. Today, as we remember those lost, I ask you to join me in faith that not only the good will endure, but they will also prevail. In closing, I would like to thank everyone for being here today. Please join us in the multi-purpose room for refreshments, and also please allow our servicemen and women, as well as the ROTC cadets, to go through the line first. It is only because of their service, lives, and sacrifice that we are here today. Thank you.